Let's take a look at some of the editing tools. These tools will be used to edit in stitch directions or splices after you have completed a complex fill, or they're really handy if you ex escape out of a tool in the middle of digitizing it and you have some of those stitch directions or input points left to, to do. If I use a complex fill and I digitize around this shape, I'm just using the traditional input method. So I'm going around the form. And I hit enter. It's going to ask for holes. I don't have one. I hit enter again. It's going to ask for my entry point, my exit point, and my stitch direction. Now in this case, I was using the traditional input method and I have one stitch direction all the way through the form and that's not really going to give me that definition or that separation of that middle part of that E that I'm looking for. So in this case, I think I would probably prefer to have used the unifill method where I could have put the splice in as I was digitizing it, but since I didn't, I still can go back in and edit that in using my editing tools. So let's take a look at how to do that. My editing tools exist below my input toolbar and I would begin by selecting my element. Let's make this a, a color that we can see the difference between my wireframe lines and the stitching. So I'll do this as a pink. I have this selected. I need to choose a splice tool. My splice tool is the green line. If I hover over it, it says insert splice. I can click on it to select that tool. My cursor now has a pair of scissors beside it. That's how I know that's what I'm doing. I can then click and drag across the form where I want that tool or that splice to be. I can then hit um, escape to get back out of that tool. Now I can come in and I can choose my insert stitch direction line. Now I can edit stitch direction lines on any complex fill. I can also use this to edit stitch direction lines on any of my column tools as well. So now that I have this selected, I can click and drag across that other region. I can do the same thing up here and down here to get those multiple stitch directions going through this form. And then I'd finish that off by having that be a satin stitch. And that's going to look very similarly to how I would have done it had I used a column tool. Another way to edit something like this that has multiple subregions is I can't really control how it uh, overlaps and the, the different way those, those elements kind of intertwine with each other or um, have junctions. So if I'm using the splice tool and I want to have more control over those subregions, I can break a complex fill apart into its subregions. To do that, if I have splices in here, I can right click on it, go to operations, and break object. And that will break it apart into those subregions. If I look in my project view now, I don't have one fill, I have two. So I have more control over which sews first, which sews next. I also have control over how far this overlaps. So I can zoom in and I can bring this edge further or under this top piece. If I look at the end here, you'll notice that I have a partial stitch. If I grab my stitch direction tool, if I left click and drag across the form, I will create a stitch direction. That will help. Let me undo so that I have that partial stitch direction or partial stitch again. The other thing that I can do is I can right click and drag close to the end and it will put a red line and that's an end line. You can also bring this in farther in a shape. So if you want to compensate for the push of an element as stitches pull, they pull in, they also push the opposite direction. So in this case, I could right click and drag, give myself an end line and bring that in a little bit and prevent some of that push. So now I've got an E that's got full stitches on all the ends. That's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at how to do this A. So I had mentioned before if I was digitizing a shape using a tool. So I'm going to grab this complex fill. I'm going to digitize this A. Going around the form. Coming down. 
hit enter. I have the shape, I'm ready to input a hole, but uh, the phone call comes and I get distracted, so I hit escape. And now I have deselected my tool. I just have this flat form here. It has no stitch information, no holes, no anything. I can come in and I can select that element. I can come back over and I can select my editing tool to insert a hole. And now I can digitize that hole. Hit enter. It's going to ask for another hole. I don't have one, so I hit enter again. I'm now out of that tool. I can select my entry point, my exit point, my splices, whatever I need to do. In this case, I'm going to grab the splice. I'm going to come across this crossbar. Same thing on the other side. And let's miter this, so I'm going to go across the top here. There we go. Let's grab my stitch directions. I'll come across here. I'll come across here. And I'll make this a satin stitch. So now we've got that set up the way that we want it. So you can edit back in all of those even if you only have the beginnings or you, you hit escape and you got out of that tool. Now, when I did that, I just had a shape that didn't have any stitch information in it. And that is very similar to how vector objects come into Design Shop. So if I open a vector design, so let's go to open. I'm going to go back to my graphics folder that I've been using. And let's grab coffeecup.eps. Now this is assuming that you have vector capabilities in your design shop. Let's zoom in here real quick. If I expand out my vector list, I can see all the different pieces that make it up. And in this, I can select them. That's just the wireframe form. That's the same thing that we had with that A. It's just that wireframe form, no stitch information. So all I have to do is come up and grab my editing tools to begin to make this stitches. I'll put this in 3D so we can see it a little bit better. But I'll say start here, click, stop here, click, and it moves automatically to my stitch direction line. So then I can click and drag across the form and I have stitch directions. Now it is using auto stitch type, auto underlay, and it's actually using a style um, to give it a little bit of pull compensation as well, which is kind of nice. Drag this across here and across here. Now I've got that nice satin stitch. I can move back in, grab this element, use my editing tool. So I'm grabbing my stitch direction line and moving my stitch direction across that way. Now when I did that, it automatically put in an entry and exit point. They may not be where I want them, so I may want to move these guys around where I would prefer to have them. Grab this shine, stitch direction, make that shine come across there. I can go back in and I can edit in all of this stitch information and that allows me to digitize these vector elements very, very quickly. So the editing tools can be used to edit in stitch information to a vector element or they can be used to edit in stitch information or a hole or a splice or resequence how something is done um, where, the, where the elements start, where they stop, and essentially how they push, as well as those stitch directions on an already digitized wireframe design. These uh, editing tools should give you the capabilities to edit in pretty much anything that you really need in any of your designs.